So I want to go over the tools that we have available to us uh, when we're doing doors, uh, especially metal doors. So that's what we're doing in this case, uh, metal front doors or nice brand new doors. So uh, we always want to use a tray liner. Okay, so we've got a tray liner here. We're going to put it in the tray, obviously, uh, but we want to keep a new, uh, nice clean tray liner because if there's any debris or lint, it's going to show uh, any dried paint from an old tray. It's going to show. So we want to make sure we have a new liner. Uh, when we're doing a metal door especially because everything is going to be visible we're going to have a whiz roller uh, you know cage or handle uh, could be of any size i like these small ones for doors uh, but many of you will have slightly longer ones and then we have our roller sleeves okay so there's a variety of whiz roller sleeves that we can use we have our traditional whiz roller okay and we've got a microfiber roller we've got another form of microfiber roller and then we have a mohair roller okay so super important that we use the right one. So uh, if we go back to the uh, whiz roller, the whiz roller is uh, gonna give us the most textured and thickest finish, um, which traditionally I might use on a wood door uh, or something textured. Uh, it's not gonna give the, the smoothest, finest finish. Then we have the microfiber rollers. Either of these are, are great. Um, one being just a little thicker than the other. It's gonna give the best and smoothest finish uh, for a metal door when using a latex paint. Uh, and then we have the mohair roller finally, which uh, the mohair roller is something that I would use whenever I'm using an oil-based product, okay? So a lot of you guys uh, wanna prime metal doors and use cover stain. I highly uh, don't recommend that. I would switch to a bullseye primer, okay? Latex base, because what you're gonna find is that in these whiz rollers, all these little specks that are on here, these little bits of lint, those are going to get ripped out. And especially on the bigger whiz roller, all of these are going to get ripped out whenever you use an oil-based product with them. So the cover stain is going to rip out that lint and it's going to put it all over the door. Okay, so if I had to prime an oil-based door, I'm going to use a mohair roller because it's the smoothest finish and doesn't have any lint that will come out of it. So in this case, we're going to prime with a bullseye latex primer, which I'm going to use one of these microfiber rollers. Uh, again, one would just give a slightly smoother look. This one on the right here would give, uh, you know, put it on a little thicker and be a little bit easier to paint with. Um, and the one on the left would just give it a bit of a finer finish. Both would give a really nice finish. The whiz roller uh, on the far right over here, I would not use this um, probably on a metal door just because it's going to give a much more textured look which a lot of customers might not uh, really enjoy. Okay, so the thinner the roller sleeve, the less paint that it technically puts on. So if you are doing a massive color change, be cautious of that, um, but it will give a really nice finish. Another option for, for the oil-based ones would be a foam roller. Again, foam rollers are good um, for a fine finish, but they, they put on very little paint and I'm not a huge, huge, huge fan. So in this case, we're gonna use one of the microfiber rollers and then uh, we'll use one for the primer, one for the paint. So when doing doors, we want to take off all of the hardware. So the handle and the lock, don't take off the hinges. Uh, just take off the hardware on the door so that we can get a nice uh, smooth roller finish in every area possible as opposed to brush strokes. Uh, we also don't want to get paint on any of the hardware. So it's easy to just take it off. And then if, especially in this case where we're going to prime this bare metal door, uh, and then do two coats of paint. It makes sense if we're gonna do three coats that we can just quickly roll those areas instead of brush around them. You don't want to tape around them because if you tape around them again, it's gonna bleed through the tape. So easier to just remove them uh, and then put them back on. Whoever takes them off should technically put them back on because it's a lot easier to remember how they work. So if the door ever closes without the doorknob on, you need to reattach one side of the doorknob or use a screwdriver of some sort to go in here and turn the mechanism so that the door will then reopen. All right, so in this case, the client is okay, or kind of doesn't want the inner part done. So we're gonna tape the edge. I would suggest as long a piece of tape as possible, going right into that edge so that we can brush that thin little metal edge on the door. Uh, the door is going white and the, the middle part, you know, essentially should be painted. Um, but there's some stickers on there that they don't want covered and they don't really care that it's not painted because it's already white. Uh, so again, just taping it so that we can quickly brush the edge without getting paint on that middle wood section. Uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. If you were painting this side here, you would brush around the hinges uh, and then all the way through this middle part to this lip here, and then you would roll it out. So you always wanna brush first and then roll out all the strokes. 
Uh, but in this case, we're going to just tape uh, the edge of this middle part and then roll everything that we can. So we're going to tape the middle section, um, the window here. I don't always recommend taping, but on this metal door, uh, now we're able to shove the whiz roller with the microfiber roller sleeve on it uh, right up against the edge there so that we can limit the brush strokes. So we'll have brush strokes on the right side, but not on the left side. And we'll, we'll try and roll out as much of it as possible to make it as smooth as possible on the entire door. Not every door has this middle window, so you don't often have to do any taping in the middle. The door is also going white, so the white on the white isn't going to be a big deal if there was the slightest bit of a missed spot, but it is important to have a really, really crisp line um, with the taping so that you're fully going to paint uh, the entire door, especially with a color change. So we always want to clean the door first, give it just a quick wipe to get rid of any dust uh, so that we can then have our primer here no problem. So on this door we're also going to tape the black little piece of weather stripping on the bottom of the door. Not all doors have this and you don't have to. Often you would uh, brush the bottom of the door and then roll it out as close as possible so that you have again as few brush strokes as possible but in this case there's a bit of a lip so it makes it a lot easier to just now roll the entire base of the door once it's quickly taped. Long pieces of tape are ideal. Uh, it's much faster uh, and then there's not going to be any breaks in the tape for weird lines. Just for other reference, on some doors, uh, the weather stripping might be a little bit higher. So instead of the last one where it's a little bit underneath the door, this one's right on the bottom of the door and kind of in the way. So one easy way to do uh, the this door is to actually take off these four screws uh, and then this guy will just kind of slide uh, right off the door and then it's much easier to paint it. And then eventually when you're putting the hardware back on, you would uh, put the weather stripping back on. So just four screws along with taking off the doorknob. So we're gonna start with cutting. We're gonna cut the uh, edges uh, where the hinges are. We're also going to cut the top corner because the roller sometimes doesn't go there properly. Um, yeah, so we'll just put paint all in there. You don't have to be too, too, too delicate because we did tape it, but you do want to make sure that it's fully coated and not bleeding through. So again, we're just brushing in that thin little edge just so that it's fully painted. We want to get the brushing out of the way so that we can then roll because when you are brushing that little edge, you're going to get a little bit on the door and everything that is on the door with a brush stroke is going to dry that way unless we roll it out. So we're going to just brush the edges, make it fully, fully covered. And then once it's kind of smoothed out and, and looks good, we can then switch to our whiz roller and essentially roll the entire door. Okay, this is primer. This is the Bullseye 123 Latex Primer. And it's gonna glide on not get absorbed because it's a metal door and we want to do full full kind of sections at a time so imagine this full right side is just one giant panel even though there isn't a natural break um, we can get paint on the top here just to fill it in and then we'll roll it one direction sideways to get rid of any of the weird marks putting paint on is totally fine it's just the last way you leave it is how it's going to look so you want to make sure that it's nice and thin You'll see from the microfiber roller that it's just a thin texture and it will level itself out as it starts to dry. Then we'll do the side. Again, can go right over where the doorknob is. You want to hold the back, but always be cautious of paint that might be on your hands <laughs> so that you're not getting it on the other side of the door. <laughs> right, and long strokes to even it out. A little hard to see in this because it's white on white, but that's okay. These panels are, are pretty thin, and because they're thin, we can pretty much use the whiz roller to just get the paint in there, to fill it all in, and then smooth it out, right? If it was a deeper or thicker panel, you'd want to use a brush in there first and then roll it out. Again, 
generously coating it and pushing it around with the tool and then spreading it out and keeping it nice and fine and smooth so there's no extra paint where it doesn't need to be, no drips. Just a smooth, fine finish everywhere. And then we'll want to go over in the sideways direction just to get rid of any lines for right underneath the door there, uh, as well as the very bottom of the door. And the nice thing with the Riz Roller, sometimes you can flip it over and use the other side to cut things. And the final way you leave it is the way it's going to dry. So go back and look to see if there's any clumps or drips or thick areas. And just give them a quick once over to smooth it out with way less product on the whiz roller. So it's just to remove it and spread it out nicely. Some of these thin lines will dry once it levels out and the paint will um, coat it. But an area like this is something that should not be left. So we'll thin that out. And you can also see um, that it's just a little uh, thick and not the texture of the roller. Okay, so just rolling it makes it go right away. Perfect. And that's why we use microfiber whiz rollers. Once it's fully done, we will leave it to dry. Again, depending on the product, you want to read the, the can, make sure you understand the recoat time. Typically, you know, two hours is uh, the recoating time for a lot of these latex based products. Um, it will be dry to touch in about 30 minutes, but we want to make sure that it's fully dry before we go and put the top coat on, which again is going to be uh, much thicker. Uh, this is going to dry in a flat finish, but the top coat we're putting on is going to be a nice semi-gloss. All right, so now that it's been a couple hours, we're going to put some paint on the door. We're going to start by brushing the edge again, just to really fill it in. This product is much thicker. This is Ecologic from Cloverdale in a semi-gloss, so it's going to be a lot thicker, a lot more white, and it's going to be uh, a lot shinier. So once we brush the edge, then we'll look at uh, getting the rolling done. Again, we've got the microfiber whiz roller, new tray liner, just a little bit of a little bit of paint. You don't actually use a lot of paint on a metal door, uh, which is really nice. And then we'll want to just kind of roll it on. You can see it's much much thicker. And if there's any lint that does come off, we always want to just kind of pick it out, um, just so that it doesn't dry under the door. We want these to be perfect. And we want to put a generous amount of paint on the surface at all time uh, because what happens is a lot of times people spread out too too much paint and then it's not thick enough to bond to itself and you get these dry flashing areas that are just thin and it's really obvious on a, a darker color uh, but we want to make sure that it's just a, a well coated surface in whatever we're painting so again rolling full panels the whole way through Again, nice and smooth whenever possible. That's why we like the microfiber roller.
shove it into the grooves to really fill them all in and then gently go over everything. So that's why it sometimes helps to start with some of the panels and like the more crazy areas and then just smooth it all out afterwards. This is what it looks like with one coat, almost covered, very fine finish, a couple specks that we can peel out for the second coat, but from afar looks great, nice and fine finished, and the second coat will just give it that perfect kind of finish where it's fully covered, it's kind of, kind of drying still, but it's more or less dry and it's got a really nice finish on it, really smooth, looks awesome. And that's kind of the desired finish we want. Then we just gently put the hardware on and tell the customers to take it easy with closing the door as uh, it's just had its final coat put on. And that's essentially why we like to use a microfiber roller and do a bit of a finer finish on someone's you know, front door or a nice metal door.